I never got into showbiz to be famous and I never got into showbiz to make money. Like I never, I never viewed it as anything other than I love to entertain. I mean, I sit at the piano for hours and play just for myself. So the icing on the cake is an audience being there and connecting. And like if connecting with people through my music meant I got famous, cool. Like I just never looked at it from the outside and to begin with, I do it from the inside and from the, for the joy of it. Just a foolish beat of my heart. In 1988, when she was only 17, Debbie Gibson released Foolish Beat, becoming the youngest artist ever to write, produce, and perform a number one hit song. And at 21, she starred in her first Broadway musical, the long-running Les Miserables. During her 30-plus year career, the pop star slash actress recorded nine studio albums, performed in 17 musicals, and made more than a dozen movies. Are you that famous singer? <laughs> well, famous is a relative term. Now, on August 20th, Debbie is releasing her first album in 20 years, The Body Remembers, which she began back in early 2019. I mean, it's so surreal that the album is finally completely done. It's just an amazing feeling to know. I mean, it's 15 songs. And, you know, this this started initially, it was gonna be a six song dance EP because I was doing a lot of upbeat dance pop music to kind of keep myself inspired and my attitude great during the pandemic and, and you know, the height of the lockdown. And then it started evolving and it still has stayed to primarily the upbeat music, but then some of the ballads started creeping in and it's thrilling to know that I can share this with everyone, finally. While the entire album is deeply personal, the title track is probably the one song that best captures Debbie's current state of mind. The Body Remembers for me is, it really represents the connection between being nostalgic, but living in the present moment. And that's really where I am, and that's what I'm all about. I will always own and pay homage to my past, especially musically. My fashion choices, maybe not always so much, but musically, I stand by every note I've ever written and ever sung, and it's important to me, it's important to people, but I also don't think everything great was done in the past. I think that you can have this healthy relationship with your past, and be living in a modern world with a new version of yourself as well. And so for me, the body remembers. It's like the body remembers the pain, it remembers the love, it remembers touring, it, um, you know, it remembers, again, the health challenges. Things are like imprinted, it remembers the song that was playing during memorable experiences in your life. And that's what that song's about. And so I feel like that song in a lot of ways is is meant to be a really special connecting song between me and my audience. So um, yeah, I'm really feeling that one. With songs like Love Don't Care and Strings, Debbie is also drawing on what she's learned about love over the years. Well, I love the message in Love Don't Care because one thing I've learned about love is it doesn't care. You can say you're ready and love does not appear. You could say you're not ready and it appears. You can be Scared to be vulnerable doesn't matter. It's gonna hit you anyway. And so I love that in that song, love's almost like a sparring partner. It's like its own entity. And and I love the turning point bridge of like, okay, but I, I am gonna give you a chance. And I think Strings is a great example too of a song really about putting self-love above everything else. To be like, you know what, I'm creating boundaries with people and saying, um, you know, I can't do strings attached friendships or relationships. It's like, what kind of relationship is that anyway? And the line for me in that song, the faith I lost in you, I found in me, is everything. It's like, oh, wait a minute, why am I attaching strings to somebody? Like, let me cut all those cords and be me, and that's the place I am in my life too. You know, my life has been very unconventional. I was an adult as a kid, I was employing 100 people by 17 years old, and you know, I had adult 
pressures, which I chose. I'm not like doing the breakout, the world's smallest violin for me. But my dating life kind of took a backseat and then marriage was just never really in the cards for me. I never felt like that was my path. I thought it was in the picture I had of my life, but then it wasn't. And so here I am at 50. I'm solo, I'm loving it, and I don't feel incomplete. I don't feel like I'm missing anything. And so if I do meet someone, what a great place to be in, to not be looking to someone to complete me in any way. You know, and so there's a lot of songs, I think, that, that speak to that theme. The Body Remembers also contains a show-stopping duet with singer Joey McIntyre that was born from the 2019 Mixtape Tour. Ten weeks of concerts headlined by Joey's group New Kids on the Block, with Debbie billed as a very special guest. So when I got called to do the Mixtape Tour, Donnie Wahlberg called me and he goes, hey, like I want to talk about your set list and everything, and, and Joe has a question he'd like to ask you, and can I put him in touch with you? I'm like, sure. And so Joey calls and he's like, how would you feel about duetting live on Lost and Rise? I get lost in your eyes. He later said like, oh my God, I can't believe I was bold enough to basically say, can you share your biggest hit with me? And I was like, oh, that's, wow, that's gonna be magical. I get weak in a glaze. And to reimagine the song with him and then to record it. I just felt like, oh my God, people had been asking for the recording for so long. And during lockdown, I was like, how would you like to record the song? And he said, you know, it really gave him something to focus on. Like music really kind of lifted him out of everything that was happening in the world. And he was like, you know, do you want to take it one step further and do live dates? He's like, how about Vegas? I'm like, Twist my arm, you're asking me to stay home and perform live with you. And it's really, really fun. It's like, you know, he has four guys he shares the stage with all the time. I don't have a musical partner in crime, you know, and he called me his pop soulmate, which is so sweet. And we've always just had this incredible professional chemistry. And it's just really a magical collaboration. It's a very special, unexpected gift in my career. So, I'm so glad that he suggested it. I'm glad I was open to it. I'm glad that the fans embraced us doing that song together as they did. It was such a magical moment. Every night on stage, you know, I'd play my verse, do my verse, and then Joey would walk out, oh, I get weak in a glance. And I was suddenly a part of the audience. You know, I was with the audience because I was witnessing the magic and the surprise. The thing I heard the most was our idol and our crush performing together. And it was kind of like, I don't know, it was such a bonding thing to be in that room, that space with, you know, 15 and 20,000 people, grown women weeping and screaming and celebrating. Again, what an unexpected gift I never could have imagined. Oh. interesting that that phrase electric youth came to me in the way that phrase the body remembers came to me and electric youth to me really is a state of mind and at the time it was a bit of a movement in terms of me saying to my peers do not let age hold you back I am here to tell you you can you can do all the things you want you can create you can empower yourself and as I get older I find myself saying to people stay eternally electric. And so take that feeling you had back then and bring it into the now, and you are forever young. Debbie certainly seems to be taking her own advice, staying eternally electric this summer. Besides releasing a new album and announcing new concert dates for August and September, she also recently wrapped her latest film, The Class, co-starring Anthony Michael Hall. It's a crazy busy summer for me because I just finished filming the movie The Class in Illinois, which was so much fun. It's such a great, great project and um, kind of like a modern day breakfast club. 
And now I'm going into these shows with Joey McIntyre and we're having a blast rehearsing and putting it together and the album, Leaving the Nest and everything. It's just, uh, this whole year has been like an embarrassment of riches for me. And because I've been doing this for so long, it's not wasted on me how infrequently that happens in a showbiz career. It's like, you can't be like hot and happening all the time. It just doesn't happen. And I kind of got used to being the girl who's always working hard. I'm doing my Hallmark movies. I'm doing Broadway. I'm, you know, pivoting. You know, I've had to pivot my whole career and kind of like just resign myself to the fact that, yeah, I'm not really the coolest person in showbiz or in the room. And I don't need to be classifying myself as A-list, B-list, C-list. Like there is no list. I'm just doing my thing. And I think like it's, it's interesting. The minute I really felt like I didn't need any validation and I was fine just continuing doing my art and letting it speak for itself and whatever happens, happens. Validation started coming this whole year. So I do think there's this huge element of timing and luck and stars aligning and it just happens to be that what maybe what I'm doing musically is connecting with people. So I just appreciate like the magic of it. I feel like this album has been such a labor of love and such a long time coming that I want to ride the wave of it into the sunset for as long and far as it'll take me. I'd like to do a world tour. Um, I feel like it's been a minute since I've, I've done that. And I feel like this is the album to take me on that journey, that one to two to three year journey of just really leaving no stone unturned in, in terms of making sure everyone who's meant to hear this music hears it, being able to perform it live for people. You know, I want to continue doing movies for Hallmark and other places I love creating. And, um, you know, just continue to enjoy my life, really. That's, that's the big main goal. And I can't wait to see everybody at the shows with Joey McIntyre at the Venetian. I mean, we're back, we're performing, we're meeting and greeting. It's happening, so I just can't wait to see people in person again and celebrate the music with them. With you guys, I'm talking about you guys. <laughs>